Hey everybody, it's JJM Jim or Triple J. Welcome back to another tutorial video here in City Skylines. Today we are discussing five quality of life mods that you can get from the Steam Workshop that really will help benefit your gameplay in terms of either not having to deal with certain things that might bug you or just things that will make your life a little bit easier while playing City Skylines. And the first one we're gonna talk about is one that we have talked about before and that is Automatic Bulldoze. Again, a very, very handy mod. I didn't know whether or not to put it in this tutorial video as well as the last one, but it is very much a quality of life mod. Look at this fire here. It's lovely. Uh, the Automatic Bulldoze is really, really handy. So if you hit B to Bulldoze, again, it will automatically demolish, if it is checked green, it will automatically demolish any abandoned or burned buildings in your city. That is, again, a very, very valuable early game. And it's one of those mods where if you don't have it installed, you know that you don't have it installed pretty quickly. Because as soon as you start your city, you're going to start to see abandoned buildings. And you're going to start to see that they take a very, very long time to go away or to reset. It, if, you, if you notice when you destroy an abandoned building, there'll be little smiley faces around some of those other buildings. Because they don't like that there's an abandoned building nearby. So it can stunt growth. It's a really nice, easy quality of life mod. Something you just don't have to worry about in the game. The next mod I want to talk about is Precision Engineering. Like Automatic Bulldoze, this is one of those that if it's not there, you will notice it. And if it's there, you kind of forget that it's actually there. So what Precision Engineering does is basically add on to the game's system of the sort of the lines and your ability to snap to angles, road lengths, grids, road guidelines. Um, it's a very, very handy tool because what it does is it will show you the amount of units you have. So in vanilla, you get all of these, you'll have all these guidelines, you'll have all these things, you'll get construction costs as well. But what you don't get, and you can see there in the center of the line, is it shows you the unit count, how far your units are. So remember in vanilla, we would have to count to five. And five is when that line would show up to the right there, right in the middle of construction cost. Well. You don't have to really worry about knowing what the units are with precision engineering because it will tell you how many units you are going out regardless of it. And it'll also show you, you know, if you're doing a curve, 10 by 10. And it will also show you the exact degree of the angle you are working with. Not only does precision engineering give you the angle and the amount of units, but it also has some other cool tools as well that you can use. So let's say I want to build a straight road right there, and I want to build a straight road here, but I want to connect these two. A couple things that precision engineering can help you with. So obviously the game has sort of installed its own in, you know, it has the line basically that shows when I'm lined up with that other road segment, right? Well, precision engineering does things like that as well, but um, can also help in certain situations where maybe this line isn't available to you because it's just too far apart. So if you hold alt and you get within the line, it will show you the direct angle that you are at to connect to it. And it kind of snaps into that angle, okay? That's if you hold alt. If you hold shift, it will give you more information about how far out you are and the elevation that you are at as well, as, as well as the distance in meters. It's, it's, it's um, I don't use this one a lot, but it's another tool that you can have in your arsenal. As well, if you hold control, so see how the, if you look at the um, degree that I'm at, right? It's kind of fluctuating between 149, 153. If you hold control, that will start to give you increments in five degree intervals which can be very, very handy when you're trying to get like a 45 or a direct 90 or maybe like a 135, something like that. So those are just a couple of extra tools that Precision Engineering has. It's a really, really great tool to use. I highly recommend it. The loading screen mod gives you a visual look at your assets and mods that you are loading into your game and will show you in red what you are missing from the Steam Workshop. Oftentimes, if you subscribe to an asset, uh, let's say it's a building or something that's a little bit larger. Generally, sometimes on the sidebar of the workshop, you'll see that you also need to subscribe to additional assets to ensure that that asset loads properly and completely into the game. 
Additionally, the loading screen mod will help find those assets that are missing or failed from your load and saves it directly to a report on your computer. So if you go to your options, click on the loading screen mod. Here it will save an asset report in a directory and this is the location of that folder. So you go to the folder, you can find all of the missing or failed assets that the loading screen mod ran. And what we'll do is it'll help guide you to finding those assets in the Steam Workshop. So it's a really, really handy tool to use to make sure that all of the assets that you are intentionally subscribing to are working properly. This one is another one that uh, I've started to use fairly recently, but have really, really loved it. This is called Remove the Need for Power Lines. So all you have to do is you have to have power planted somewhere on your map. So we have our power stations. As you can see, we do have, uh, we're producing 923 electric um, megawatts of electricity, but it does not matter if they are connected or not to the actual grid, which can become very handy when building um, like small, small towns out in the middle of nowhere. So as you can see, if we get rid of all this, we used to have to connect these power lines, right? And maybe we didn't want power lines running along there because sometimes you just don't want to see the power lines or you just don't want to have to remember to build them. That's something that you that you can also use it for, you know? Maybe you just forget to use them and then, you know, something runs out of power or you break a connection when you're building a road. Well, you don't have to worry about that anymore with this mod. It's a very, very handy tool something that um, I've really come to like. To note, there is also a water pipes one as well, a water pipes version, meaning you don't need to have to build out water pipes. You actually just need to make sure that you place water and sewage, but you don't actually need the pipes. That is another one that is out there as well. I didn't add that one in just because I don't tend to use that one as much. I actually don't mind building water pipes. I think building water pipes is kind of fun there's something kind of relaxing about it and I generally remember those before I start to remember the power lines and also the water pipes are hidden so for me the aesthetic value um, of not having water pipes doesn't change as much as not having to see the power lines another mod that we have talked about before but I wanted to add it in here because it is a really good quality of life mod and that is hide it Hide it is another one that is invisible to you from the outside, but if you go into your options under your mod settings, shows you lots of different things that you can hide in the game. You can hide any sort of tool colors, you can hide any sort of buttons that you have available to you, but most importantly, you can hide seagulls, which uh, tend to congregate around any sort of parks that you have down, and they make a lot of noise. You can just get rid of them right here. You can get rid of any of these other things. Tons of options here. Also the buoy lines. So if you notice, uh, in our ferry system here, generally when you make a ferry line, there are buoys that line, that sort of line where the line is. Um, I'll show you here. We scroll down and we take out buoys. Okay, now you'll see we have buoys that sort of create the general path of where our ferries are going. Now, sometimes you might want these, but most of the time, this seems a little ridiculous to me. I don't like to have these buoys, especially in this succession, just sort of lining the, the river. It just seems a little unrealistic to me. So I like to get rid of them, and that is what Hide It can do. It actually is a really, really handy tool. You don't have to save or reload. It automatically does it for you, and there you go. The buoys are gone. The other things it can do as well that replaces several other mods that we had to have before is getting rid of grass decorations, your fertile decorations, any of those sprites that pop up on the ground, those are gone. You can also change to make sure that your groundwater and colors and the purple pollution is no longer, it gets rid of all of that. So as you can see in our industrial sector, no longer is the ground purple or there's no smog even in here. Now, of course you can turn all those things back on if you'd like, but uh, right now our industrial areas just don't look as nasty as they used to. And um, that's of course an aesthetic choice on your end, but those are some things that I like to also turn off as well. 
with this mod. And lastly, I'd like to give a special shout out, a special recognition for another mod. Um, I wanted to make this a, a five mod series, but I wanted to add in just a little extra added bonus. The Find It mod is also a very handy quality of life mod you can use in this game. What it does is it creates a little magnifying glass down here next to your policies window. And what you can do is if you have a bunch of assets that you've downloaded from the Steam Workshop, but you don't maybe remember what they're called or you need just a hint, all you can do is search for them. So if you just search bench, it will pull up any sort of picnic table, park bench, anything that has that sort of label attached to it from the workshop or within the game. So it allows you to find these things a lot quicker. Find it can be very, very handy, especially when you start getting into the hundreds and hundreds of assets that you can have on the Steam Workshop. And trust me, it's very easy to start getting that many assets. Find it can become very valuable and much, much needed time saver for you. So you can get back to building and not have to keep searching all day long. All right, everybody, that will do it. This was just a quick little video on five quality of life mods that I like to use. There are many, many more quality of life mods on the workshop that you can access, but these are some of my favorites and ones that I would not want to play without. Um, so let me know, let me know what your favorites are. And it, it could be completely different. You might pick five totally different mods and that is more than acceptable because this game can be played in a multitude of ways. I've said before and I'll say it again. So everybody, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think and I will see you in the next tutorial video here in City Skylines. Bye everybody.